Hello, I'm meteorologist Anthony Giannis, and today I wanted to share uh, my book with you. It's a book I wrote a few years ago. It's titled, A Wild Ride on the Water Cycle, A Jake and Alice Adventure. Jake and Alice hang out together, just like you do with your friends. They laugh and play and sometimes even cry together. But they're very different from your friends. They are drops of water. Jake and Alice met in a lake so long ago, there were still dinosaurs in the water and on land. Jake, who was shy and quiet, saw these strange creatures all around. When he noticed Alice, who was brave and adventurous, splashing near the shore, he swam over to her. He didn't feel so alone anymore. Nice to meet you, said Alice. Don't fret. They look tough, but they won't hurt you. Now, Jake didn't know if he believed her, but he splashed around with her anyway. Before long, he'd forgotten his fear and made a new friend. A Tyrannosaurus Rex was drinking at the edge of the lake. Ooh, let's get closer so we can see its big teeth, said Alice. <gasps> Jake just quivered. She grabbed his hand. Don't worry, Jake. I'll protect you. They drifted closer, and the dinosaur swallowed the two friends whole. Whoa, what's happening? They shouted as they slipped and slid down the dinosaur's long throat. When they finally landed in its stomach, it was pitch black. I guess that wasn't such a good idea, said Alice. They stayed close to each other in the dark so it wasn't so scary, but with no sunlight, their days began to run together. They sloshed around telling jokes and stories until one day their whole world shook. The mighty dinosaur fell to the ground and died. When any living thing dies, the earth absorbs the water inside the body. Jake and Alice were pulled from the blackness of the dinosaur into the warm brown of the earth. Plant and tree roots surrounded them like a spider's web. Jake got scared again. Don't worry, Jake, said Alice. I'm here. I won't leave you. Now, Jake remembered how she'd gotten them swallowed by the T-Rex, but he knew she was a good friend, so he didn't say anything. Like all living things, plants and trees need water to survive. Water drops carry vital nutrients to vegetation. Alice held Jake's hand as the tree root drew them in for nourishment. From the root, they traveled up the tall trunk, out on a limb, and into the veins of a leaf. Everything looked bright and green, and the two friends swayed gently in the breeze. They relaxed, feeling the warmth of the sun. As the temperatures warmed, Jake and Alice began to feel funny. Suddenly, they felt themselves floating away. Alice, where are you? I can't see you, said Jake. I'm right here, Jake, but where are you? The friends had transformed from liquid water into invisible water vapor. They were in danger of losing each other. Now they were both scared. Alice grasped around in the air until he found Jake's hand. I've got you. She grabbed Jake just in time. What started out as a slow ascent quickly turned into a race upward. They felt like they were in a rocket launching into space. They were caught in an updraft, a part of a storm that brings moisture from the ground to the very tops of the clouds. As they climbed higher and higher, the temperature got colder. Jake and Alice began to shiver and then to freeze. Their bodies started to collect ice. The ice built up until they were in the center of a baseball-sized piece of hail. Once they reached the top of the cloud, they shot back to the earth at 100 miles per hour. It was a wild ride. On the ground, Jake and Alice melted quickly. The sun shone on them, evaporating them for a second time. Oh no, here we go again, Alice said. But this time, they didn't rise nearly as fast or travel as far. They turned from invisible water vapor into drops of rain and fell landing with a splash into a river. Now Jake was getting used to the adventure. This is fun, Alice, he called, as they raced down the rushing river. When they slowed down, they found themselves into a huge ocean. This body of water would be their home for a long time. For many years, Jake and Alice explored the seas. They swam through all of the oceans of the world. They played with dolphins and whales in the Pacific, saw colorful coral reefs near Australia, and even hung out with penguins in the Antarctic. Their journey took 2,000 years. 
didn't seem very long to Jake and Alice. They were the best of friends now. They splashed happily around the world, talking endlessly about the fascinating sights along the way. Now, one especially hot summer day in the Atlantic Ocean, Alice noticed thunderstorms a short distance away. She was experienced enough by now to know that soon she and Jake would become water vapor again and begin their journey to the sky. She wasn't worried. This time was different. As Jake and Alice rocketed up, they condensed into a raging swirl of clouds. It was loud, windy, and scary. Stay together, Alice shouted. What, Jake called, spinning away from her. Alice caught Jake's just in time as the clouds started to circle the eye of the storm. As the storm moved into the Gulf of Mexico, Jake and Alice speed picked up. They held on for dear life as the winds around the center of the hurricane twisted at 125 miles per hour. Jake thought his life was over. Finally, the hurricane made landfall on Galveston Island in Texas. Jake and Alice turned from a spinning cloud into huge raindrops. Friction and gravity flattened all raindrops so they fell to the ground shaped like hamburgers. This wasn't a gentle rain shower. It was a torrential downpour. Jake and Alice were part of a powerful flood that damaged homes and cars and uprooted trees. Oh no, said Alice. Did we do this? After many hours, the flood waters receded. Jake and Alice seeped back to the earth. This time, they passed all the roots. They sank deeper and deeper into the earth until they reached a pool of fresh water. They had landed in an aquifer, the source of our drinking water. What's next, thought the friends. They waited and waited for their next adventure, but absolutely nothing happened. Water can be in the ground 10,000 years and go as deep as 1,000 feet, sometimes more. Jake and Alice did a lot of swimming and talking. If they weren't best friends who had been on many adventures together, they might have gotten really bored. It seemed to take an eternity, but Jake and Alice finally climbed up the surface of the earth, underground pipes pulled them into a kitchen refrigerator freezer. It's cold in here. Where are we? Jake uh, whispered as his teeth chattered. They turned from water into a frozen cube of ice. It was the coldest they had ever been. Even hugs couldn't warm them up. Too cold to even talk, they stayed in the dark freezer for a few days. Finally, the freezer door opened and the light went on. A boy named Tom reached in and scooped them up. He put them in a glass of water. Jake and Alice began to melt. The boy put the cup to his mouth. Not again, said Jake. Alice laughed. I wonder if he knows he's drinking the same water that dinosaur drank. Jake laughed too. Down the hatch they went. It was just as dark as it had been in the T-Rex. Tom finished his water and went outside to play soccer. It was a hot, sunny day. As his body temperature rose, he started to perspire. Guess who came out of the pores of Tom's forehead to cool him off? That's right. Jake and Alice became beads of sweat. They soon evaporated off Tom's skin. They rose gently into the sky and became a small part of a beautiful, puffy, cumulus cloud. The clouds provided shade to Tom and his friends who played beneath them. Jake and Alice floated gently above the United States' as clouds. On nice days, they transformed into cirrus clouds, soaring 30,000 feet above the earth. In San Antonio, Texas, they hugged the ground as fog, which is a stratus cloud that forms on the Earth's surface. They saw stunning mountain peaks, and the view of the ocean from the sky was breathtaking. As summer turned to fall and fall to winter, the beautiful colors below them faded, and the temperature got cool again. Jake and Alice started falling from the cloud. As Jake looked at his friend, he realized she had never looked so beautiful. They had become snowflakes, gliding gently to the ground. They landed on a frozen lake in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Ice skaters enjoyed the winter, laughing and swirling around the ice. Jake and Alice loved watching the skaters. The friends had become part of the ice, so they had a really good view. Three months later, as winter turned to spring, the friends melted into the lake. Looking around, Jake realized they had returned to the spot where they had met all those years ago. There were even creatures drinking off the shore, but none were as big as the dinosaurs. Alice clutched Jake's hand. 
Uh, let's stay in the middle and swim for a while, she said. It's much safer here. Jake laughed and splashed. Aren't you ready to go on another wild ride? Don't worry, Alice. I'll protect you. And that is the end. I did want to show you the last page. The last page is a glossary of all the terms in this story that actually represent the water cycle from evaporation, condensation, precipitation, infiltration, evapotranspiration, groundwater, and runoff. And in many of your science books, this is the image that you see of all of the elements of the water cycle. And I hope you enjoyed the adventures of Jake and Alice, and I appreciate you spending time with me today.